Hi everybody, this is Roxy, your Firewave Lawyer Mom, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my Christmas school plans for 2024. So stay tuned. Hello YouTube friends, thank you so much for clicking on this video today. I'm really excited because today's video is going to be one where I'm going to be sharing with you the Christmas school plans that we have for 2024. Now Christmas schooling is something that I have done in my homeschool since the beginning and it really is a special time in our homeschool where we're able to kind of put away some of the things that we're doing on the day to day and focus a little more on the season. And so if you're looking for ways that you can incorporate Christmas into your homeschool, please watch this video because it's going to have a lot of different resources that I've used not only this year, but I've used in the past to help us to bring Christmas into our homeschool. Now, Christmas is a really busy time for our family. The month of December really is full of holiday parties and we have a co-op that we belong to, so we do a lot of things there. We have family coming into town. There's always things that are going on. And so we like to really slow down things in our homeschool when it comes to the month of December. Typically, we take off the Thanksgiving week and when we come back, we begin when we come back from our Thanksgiving break, we begin what we call Christmas school. And we really do Christmas school up until about the third week of December, where we then take off the following two weeks to celebrate Christmas and New Year's. So it's really not a long period of time that we're doing our Christmas school, but it is so meaningful. And I like to pack a lot in there so that we can be able to get the fullness of the season in our homeschool um, during our homeschool time. So first I'm gonna share with you how I incorporate Christmas school into my homeschool day. It's divided into four different sections. We have each of my two girls' is independent work time, we have morning meetings, we have family subjects, and we have morning basket. And our morning basket is done on Monday through Thursday where we run a loop schedule where we go through different subjects every day. It's a different theme and that is the best way that I'm able to go through a lot of different curriculum throughout the school year and so that during the morning basket time which is usually about an hour and a half to two hours is when we do the bulk of our Christmas schooling however this year I'm going to do something a little bit different because what I have done in the past is I've kept everybody at the same workload during December and then just incorporated the Christmas school in our morning basket and taken out things in the morning basket but I found that we really do not have a lot of time just in the two hours to get through a lot of the things we want to do during the Christmas season so this year I'm gonna try something different and I'm actually going to remove some of the independent work that they normally do to give us a little more time to be able to celebrate the, the, the season and Christmas school now one of the things that I'm really looking to do this year is to have much slower a slower pace to our homeschool during the Christmas season we are going to have very packed weekends in the month of December and I know that when we get back to the Mondays after those weekends it's gonna be a lot of catching up on sleep and you know we homeschool so the the, the best part of that is that we get to tailor our schooling to our family life and so one of the things that I want to be able to do is just to be able to start much slower not have as much of a kind of sticking to our routine and schedule and be able to just enjoy hot chocolate in the morning and a slower breakfast and just really spend that family time and so what I've decided to do is for both of my girls I'm going to be um, removing their spelling and their vocabulary subjects a lot with their writing curriculum which we do IEW and so we're going to be taking those out for the month of December which is really only three weeks and we're going to be putting in that extra time into our Christmas school also for our the writing we're going to be doing some journaling we're going to be writing Christmas cards we're going to be um, doing some sp special writing prompts for December that I have especially for my fourth grader so they are still going to be doing their writing but it's going to just be more geared towards Christmas so that's kind of how I incorporate it but the majority of our time is going to be during our morning basket time, which really, if I take out some subjects, it's gonna give us about like 30 to 45 minutes more for us to be able to do our morning basket. Now, you guys may think that that may seem like a big chunk of the day, but we take a lot of breaks, we have lunch in between, there's things that go on, and my kids really look forward to morning basket every day. So 
But that's a little bit about what we actually do on the overall for, for Christmas school. Now I'm gonna kind of get into what the curriculum I'm gonna be using is. So I'm gonna briefly overview what our morning basket will look like during Christmas school. Then I'm gonna turn the camera around and actually show you the resources that I'm gonna be using this year. So let's get started. Now, one thing that I'm gonna give you as a disclaimer is that I will be linking everything in the description box below, so don't worry, you will have links and you will have a list of all of the books that I'm gonna be using and the resources as well. Um, I've also done separate videos on our Christmas traditions, but you're gonna hear some of our Christmas traditions uh, woven into our Christmas schooling. If you wanna know more about what are some of the traditions that we use for Christmas. So I have a separate video, which I will link in the description box below for our Christmas traditions. And I think I'm gonna update it because as my children have gotten older, our Christmas traditions have changed just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to be sharing with you that. I'm also gonna be sharing with you kind of what we do on the weekends too, because a little bit of our Christmas school does have to do with the weekend. So I will share that with you as well. So let's get started with our morning basket. So I'm gonna give you guys the themes of each of the days on our loop schedule, and then I'm gonna turn the camera around and share with you the actual resources so you could kind of get a little idea of what these resources look like. So the first thing we're going to do is we have daily things that we do in the morning for our morning basket to start. We do our morning prayer. We're going to be doing our Jesse tree this year, which we um, have done in the past. Jesse tree is just a genealogy of the life and times prior to the birth of Christ and how that came about and how everything kind of evolved in the Old Testament and the prophets and all of that stuff. And so it's broken down into different scripture readings. So we're gonna be doing that to get started with our morning basket. We're gonna talk about our saint of the day, which every day during the, the liturgical year in the Catholic Church, there is a different saint. So we're gonna read about that. Our Bible verse for December is going to be Isaiah 5, uh, verse 9 through 6, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 9 through 6. And then we're going to go through a series of short read alouds. So with my read alouds, I like to do just little bursts of reading aloud each book each day. And that kind of helps us to move along fa faster with different uh, books. We're going to be doing a treasury of Christmas stories and songs, the history of Christmas, celebrating a merry Catholic Christmas as well. So those are gonna be our short read alouds. Our like read aloud that we're gonna be actually doing, um, our chapter book read aloud that we're gonna be doing is The Best Worst Christmas Pageant Ever. Now, this is a book that I've been wanting to read for many years when my kids were younger, but this year it came out, they came out with a movie, so we wanna go check out the movie, and I wanna read, of course, we always like reading the book before watching the movie, so we're gonna be doing this, and then we're going to be doing um, How Winston Delivered Christmas which I will show you here, it still hasn't come in yet. Um, that one we're gonna be doing after because this is pretty short of a book, so we'll probably get through this pretty quickly. Then for our daily, I have got a wonderful Advent puzzle. So I found this on Amazon and I thought it was really cool because we love to do as part of our morning time and just throughout the weekends of December, we like to do Christmas puzzles. But I found this because I thought it was really cool. It's actually an Advent calendar jigsaw puzzle. You open this box and there's 24 little boxes of puzzle pieces and throughout the month of December, you are creating this puzzle piece. And I thought it was so unique to have something like that where we can do it a little bit at a time. And then by the time you get to Christmas day, you'll have this entire beautiful puzzle done. So we're going to be doing this as part of our morning basket just while I I do my read aloud. I will bring out one of the boxes. They can put the puzzle together and listen to my read aloud. So I thought this was a really great idea to incorporate puzzle um, puzzles with your morning basket. So I will link this in the description box below as well. Now, those are kind of like our dailies. And then we're going to go into our loop schedule. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, we are going to be doing a hymn unit study. And we're also going to be doing a Victorian Christmas Eve on Mondays. So I like to incorporate history into Christmas school. And I really would have been fascinated with Victorian, the Victorian era, especially how they celebrated Christmas during the Victorian era. As a matter of fact, a lot of the Christmas traditions that we celebrate today come from Victorian times. And so we're going, I found this great unit study on Etsy, which I will show it to you, um, that has the different things that are unique about the Victorian era and Christmas. And so we're gonna be doing that on Mondays. 
And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we are going to be doing geography, world geography, and we're going to be doing Christmas around the world. Now, there's a lot of Christmas around the world studies out there, but the one that I found is not very well known, but really impactful and wonderful. And I'm going to show it to you because I just absolutely love that. Then on um, Thursdays, we are going to also be doing a, a little bit of art because I like to bring in art with our studies and that we're going to be do we're going to be doing a book called the 12 symbols of christmas by melissa sunday now this is a book that's really kind of taken a lot of popularity lately and i thought it would be great to use this book and to do different art projects based on the symbols of christmas and so i will be sharing with you a little bit about that um, I don't have the book in yet, but I will show it to you guys right here what it looks like. But basically, it just goes through the most popular symbols of Christmas and how they have developed, what the history is behind them. And we're going to probably just go on Art for Kids Hub or any kind of YouTube and just draw or watercolor these symbols just to kind of um, have a little record and then I'll create a little book that we can keep as a memento for that. So that's pretty much the bulk of what we're going to be doing as far as our loop schedule for morning basket. So basically, just to recap, it's Mondays and Wednesdays, we're going to be doing a hymn unit study. Tuesdays and uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, we're going to be doing Victorian Christmas. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to be doing our Christmas around the world along with our art 12 symbols of Christmas. And that's it for what we're going to be doing for our loop schedule. Now on Fridays, we plan on doing going back to our tradition of our Christmas book and movie nights. And so what we like to do during the month of December after the Friday after Thanksgiving and even um, so the Friday after Thanksgiving, along with all the Fridays leading up to Christmas, we like to pack it with Christmas and a movie. So Fridays are pretty kind of low key for us. We have our co-op on Fridays and we just like to just have an early dinner and just cuddle up on the couch and watch movies. And so what we're going to be doing this year is we're going to be going back to the traditional movies that we like to watch. So um, I will leave in the description box the list of movies, but I have books for all of the movies that we're going to be watching. So we'll read the book, watch a movie, maybe have like some kind of a dish or meal if that was in the movie. Like for example, an elf, they do spaghetti. So maybe we'll have spaghetti that night or you know, for Polar Express, we'll bake cookies, stuff like that. So to kind of tie in um, our dinners with the movie as well. So we're gonna be doing that. Some of the movies we're gonna be uh, watching are Elf, Grinch, Home Alone, Christmas Carol, The Star, and Polar Express. So leading up to Christmas, we will be re we will be watching those movies as well. So that's going to kind of be a little part of our Christmas school that goes into the weekend. So let me turn the camera around and share with you the resources that I'm going to be using for our Christmas school. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you guys is our daily readings, the daily read alouds that we're going to be doing. This one is called Christmas is Coming, Traditions from Around the World. So this is going to go in along with our Christmas Around the World unit study. And it's such a beautiful book. It has great illustrations and it basically goes through different customs and traditions from all around the world dating back through history and I really love this book it's so great because you could just pick one a day and it's not a very long read and it just has different stories of different beliefs like for example this is the they call it the giant from Sweden in the first week of advent an unusual straw sculpture appears in the main square of this Swedish town called Gavle I don't know if I'm spell I'm pronouncing that correctly it's a cool book because it really helps to see different parts. And, and if you're somebody who doesn't want to do a full Christmas around the world curriculum, you could just get this book and read it to your children and they'll be able to learn different traditions. And I also like to link YouTube videos with this. So like if we find something interesting and the kids want to go through a more deeper dive, we can um, kind of use that, this as a spine and just kind of expand on that. So I like this book. The next one I use for just daily <clears throat> reading aloud is a treasury of Christmas stories and songs. This is a beautiful book, again, with a lot of illustration. Now, we don't go through all of these books in one year. We've been going through these books for several years because we have not been able to finish them. This one is great for 
reading different stories about Christmas. So obviously it always starts with a nativity story and then it goes into different stories that are just classic Christmas stories. It goes through the Nutcracker um, and look how beautiful the illustrations are. That's like one of the things that I love is that the illustrations are just so nice and colorful. It goes through different songs, like different Christmas songs as well. Sorry for the glare there. Um, the, it goes through different Christmas songs so you could use this to sing. Um, it talks about like diff just different stories that have to do with Christmas that have been passed down through the years. This is a wonderful book. I highly recommend this one. Then the other one that I like also is called The History of Christmas, 2,000 Years of Faith, Fable, and Festivity. If you're looking to do a unit study just on the history of Christmas, you can use this book as a spine to be able to learn how Christmas developed over time, how it um, turned into what we celebrate today, basically. And so it just starts from the beginning, Christ's birth, ordinary day in Bethlehem. Now, it is pretty lengthy, so you can definitely break this up up into different days, but it goes into, you know, how the early church celebrated Christmas. And then it just goes right into modern day, um, Christmas today. You know, it goes to um, the Victorian period. It goes through just all different ways that Christmas developed over time. This is a wonderful book. I highly recommend this book. And you could find all of these on Amazon or the majority of them. <clears throat> now we are a Catholic family, so we are going to be using this book this year. This is a new one. I, ha I have never used this one before. It's called Celebrating a Merry Catholic Christmas, A Guide to the Customs and Feast Days of Advent. And I love that because it really helps us to tie in our Catholic faith with Christmas. And so it goes through the origins of Advent. It goes through how the Advent wreath was discover how the Advent wreath came about, um, suggestions for good Advent preparations. It talks about feast days during Advent. And again, beautiful illustrations. I really cannot wait to use this one with my children. And these are just, we read a little bit at a time every day. This is one that we're not going to be doing this year, but I wanted to share it with you because it's such a beautiful book. It's called All Creation Waits, The Advent Mystery of New Beginnings. If you're somebody that likes to do nature studying and talk Talk about animals and nature and all of that. This is a wonderful tie-in with nature and the Advent season. And the way that it does it is it talks about how animals prepare for the winter months. What is it that they do? How they begin to slow down for the Advent season and how it ties into us as people slowing down during the month of December to really focus on the true meaning of the season. And it is by Gail Boss. Now, if you're going to do this, I highly recommend Audible has a great audio version of this book. I think it's being read by the author with sound effects and music. It's really beautiful. And I used, I did this last year with my kids over breakfast. We would just sit and listen to the different stories, but it goes through tons of different animals and how they prepare for hibernation and to slow things down for winter. And I just th thought it was such a beautiful book. I highly, highly recommend this one. Um, another thing we're going to be doing with our Christmas hymn study, as I, sh I shared with you, is we are going to be using this as a supplement to our unit study for him for hymns, and that is an Advent Carols Countdown Stories Behind the Most Beloved Music of Christmas. I am like completely fascinated with the story behind all of the songs that we sing during the Christmas season. I have always loved to hear the history about them. And so when I show you guys my hymn unit study, you'll see why I got this book as well. But if you want to just do this book, you can do this as a unit study yourself as well. Um, for our Jesse tree, as I told you guys, every day we're going to be doing our Jesse tree. We love this book called Unwrapping the Greatest Gift by Anna Voskamp. And it is a celebration of Christmas and it goes through the Jesse tree. It goes through all of the different parts of the Jesse tree. Now, if you guys don't know what the Jesse tree is, uh, the, there is a scripture passage that, that, stated that prophesied that uh, from the shoot of Jesse, from the stump of Jesse, Christ would be born. And so it goes through, um, oh, there it is right here. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, Isaiah 11.1. 1. And so it talks about 
all of the things leading up to the birth of Christ through the Old Testament, starting with um, with the Garden of Eden, going into all of the different prophets that prophesied about um, about Jesus is coming. And it's just a wonderful book. I have actually cried reading this book because it's such the meditations are and the and the devotions are just so beautiful. I highly recommend this. We have ornaments that go that that look just like these pictures. And so we put one ornament every day. We even do this one on the weekends because we like to keep up with our Jesse tree. And this is one of our most favorite traditions in our family. Now, here are some of the uh, unit studies we're going to be doing. It's pretty much three unit studies. The first one is uh, Victorian Christmas, and this is the one that we're going to be doing on Mondays. It's by a company called The Cottage Schoolhouse, and I found this on Etsy. It's a very small, short unit study, and it just goes through the Victorian era, and it talks about the history of, I hope you guys can see this, it talks about the history of Christmas trees, caroling, Christmas cards, treats and gifts, and Christmas bells. And so it goes through the history and how in the Victorian period this came about. And so it gives you book suggestions that we'll probably look up for read alouds. And it talks about some of the movies that, that have Christmas taking place in the Victorian era that you can watch along with it. So we can, we're going to add some of these movies to our movie nights as well, just to tie everything in. And so it goes through the history of the Victorian era, and then it goes through each of the different symbols of Christmas and how they kind of came about during the Victorian era. So this is a wonderful study. I really liked it when I saw it. And what I love too about it is it comes with printables as well. So there are some printables for them to do picture studies, which I love picture studies. It has um, some Bible verses that you can make into cards, but mostly it's picture studies. And I love that. It's very Charlotte Mason. So if you are a Charlotte Mason uh, homeschool, you'll definitely love this unit study. Also has some coloring pages, some postcards to be able to write some Christmas postcards as well. So this is a great little unit study if you want to focus on the Victorian period. Now, the next one that I'm going to be doing is the Christmas Around the World. Now, there's a lot of Christmas Around the World unit studies out there, but this one has become my favorite. Why? Because it's by a, um, a company called Barefoot Within the Trees, and it's so beautiful because it goes through several countries. Not only does it do that, but it also talks about winter holidays. It goes through Kwanzaa, Chinese New Year, Hanukkah, and winter solstice. Now, we started this last year and we did not finish it. We did about like three countries last year. It was a very busy Christmas, but we're committing to doing about five countries this year, and then we'll probably finish it next year. But it goes through, it gives you a book list, which I love, and it goes through a the lesson pages. So the lesson pages start with this cute little gnome, and his name is Gnomen Jingleberry, and he is going to be the one that is going to be your guide, taking you throughout the world to all of these different countries. And so what's awesome, if you see this blue writing here, it's a link to an audio MP3 where you're going to hear Gnome Jingleberry, who's the cutest little gnome, talk and read to the children everything about how they're going to go from country to country. So I I really love that. I thought that was so cool and unique because it really helps you to kind of tie everything in together. And so it's, I just really loved it. I thought it was so fantastic. It has, um, so you basically read the lesson out loud and then um, you do discussion questions and then they have some art and handiwork suggestions. Also QR code, which is great to have more different videos that you can watch. It gives you some extensions for you to be able to use if you want to kind of go into a deep dive but it really is great like look how beautiful the illustrations are these are again letters written by Noman Jingleberry as he travels through each of the countries and so it has like some great little handicraft projects if you like that kind of stuff it has recipes um, and it just goes through all of the different 
countries. And I really loved it. I thought it was very open and go and very, see it has like the Chinese New Year stuff that you could use. You could make like a dragon pop it. And then it goes into the next country. And so I, I just really loved this. I thought it was so beautiful and beautifully laid out. And again, there are a lot of Christmas around the world unit studies that I have done in the past, but I find that this one is like the simplest one and one that you can really easily get through during the Christmas season. Now, the last unit study we're gonna be doing, as I told you guys at the beginning of this video, was a hymn study. We are going to be using campfire curriculums in the season of Caroling Noel. And this is a hymn study that focuses on one Christmas uh, hymn every it focuses on one Christmas hymn every lesson and it goes through some of the most classic Christmas tales. Now, Campfire Curriculums is something that I started to use uh, back when I did their first original Thanksgiving unit. And to be quite honest, I didn't really like their first Thanksgiving unit. I felt that it was very, very lengthy and very meaty and just like way too overwhelming for me. But then I recently this year, and if you guys look at my Thanksgiving resources video, I shared that I got their second Thanksgiving mini unit, which was called Giving Thanks. And I really loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It had such great lessons lessons and it was very simple to do. This seems much like that one that I liked in the sense that the lessons are not super long. This is a really cool feature that it has the actual musical notes of the Christmas hymn because if you're somebody who is a musical family, if you know someone who plays the piano or any kind of instrument, they can put this and they can play the actual song live. So it has QR codes that you can scan over here for the actual hymn. So what we'll probably do is listen to the hymn and then we'll do the lesson on it and do the different reflections that it has. But again, beautiful illustrations and we're not gonna probably get to every single hymn in this, in this hymn study. We'll probably break this up over this year and next year, but I really love the way that it was laid out and I am very excited to use it. And I will let you guys know how it goes throughout the month of December. But that is what we are going to be doing Doing for our hymn study this year. All right, everyone. So hopefully you enjoyed all of those resources. That is what we are going to be doing for our Christmas school this year. What are you guys doing for Christmas school? Definitely leave in the comments below what it is that you're gonna be doing for Christmas school. I always look for ideas and I hope that this video was helpful to all of you. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be coming up with my next few videos about Christmas, talking about my kids' traditional Christmas kickoff boxes, which I always love to do every year, along with other resources throughout the Christmas season. I'm gonna probably do a day in the life so that you guys can see our Christmas school in action. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope everyone is having a wonderful holiday season and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye. But this is my favorite holiday. It's a chance to start over new. Cause I missed you so I'm late.